Yo, what's happening? This is Mike D, Mr. Double Down on You, and I hope y'all are having a great day. Um, I hope everybody is staying healthy, doing what they got to do to abide by the recommendations and, and all of that, but also to uh, not allow the hysteria to instill fear in your life, right? And so in the midst of, you know, the challenges that we're currently facing, um, you know, as it pertains to COVID-19 or the corona virus that's currently, you know, impacting the world, not just the United States. Remember, the United States is just 5% of the world's population. So it's really impacting the world. So in regards to that, you know, we're in a challenging situation, right? But one of the things that I thought about recently was how can we learn something from this particular situation to carry forward, right? How can we learn something from this situation to carry forward? And again, we're right in the midst of it all right now. So we haven't gotten through it yet. We're in the midst of it. But being able to think about some lessons that we can learn, some things that we can apply and some things that we can build upon going forward, I think will make us all better once we come out on the back side of this thing or on the back end of this thing. Come out on the back side, you know, the back end of this thing. And um, I got a few thoughts. Right. So a few things that are currently um, in place during this crisis that we're facing that could get continued are as follows. You know, first and foremost, doctors across state lines. So a lot of people don't realize that, you know, physicians are, you know, they get licensed in particular states. And so they're only licensed to practice in particular states, which limits them from being able to utilize their gift or their skill set across state lines, even within the country. So by them eliminating that barrier because of the crisis and allowing doctors to practice across state lines, I think is actually pretty interesting and pretty cool. So that might be something that they're doing now in the midst of this crisis that could help benefit the country going forward is allowing physicians to practice across state lines. Right. I mean, honestly, take it up, take it outside of uh, health care. Think about education. You know, teachers get certified in various states or, you know, there are other professions that are in essence are licensed state by state. What if those things were removed and going forward, you're in the country, we're all in the same country. What if people were open to being able to practice and utilize their gift, utilize their skill set and benefit society across state lines? And this really comes into play for people who live near states, near other states. You know, I grew up in Augusta, Georgia, and literally I grew up five minutes away from the Georgia, South Carolina state line. And honestly, my mother worked in South Carolina. So it was one of those things where there are a lot of people who live in one state and work in another. But the reality is sometimes due to whatever profession you're in, you're not licensed in that other state. So doctors being able to cross uh, practice across state lines, I think is something that during this crisis that was introduced that could be beneficial for society going forward. Another thing, you know, a lot of universities have, in essence, shut down school for the remainder of the semester. Right. So a lot of them have shut down in person learning for the rest of the semester. And a lot are offering online or virtual learning opportunities. Right. So my whole thing going forward, what if you put in the capacity in which kids going to college or folks that are getting advanced degrees or getting you know, education? Now, the in-person or the online or virtual option is there. It's not just in cases like this, but, you know, what if you now open it up to, you know, I can learn better from home. Some people are like that. Some people are wired in which they do learn better, you know, in a virtual or online environment. Probably especially, you know, folks who are growing up in which that is the reality. You know what I'm saying? For them. You know, I grew up in... You know, I basically was non-virtual, you know, up until I was, you know, within my 30s or so in which it became more prominent. But now you think about someone who's under the age of, you know, 30, their whole life has been, you know, in the midst of technology. So for them, they might thrive in an online or virtual type situation. So what if universities going forward give students the option of being in person or online or virtual for 
every situation or in every situation or every circumstance. And then I don't know, maybe that's something that becomes better, but that might be something that needs to be considered, you know, after or post, you know, uh, Corona crisis. You know what I'm saying? But again, these are things that going forward, we could potentially adopt that could be beneficial and that we learned from in regards to the, um, you know, the Corona crisis. So the next is, um, you know, working or, or you're okay. <laughs> the, um, the, the next is like working remotely or working virtually, you know, in roles that are not necessarily essential, you know, uh, to have you live or in person. You know what I'm saying? So there are a lot of people who currently do work remotely or have the option for, you know, working from home or, you know, whatever it may be. But this situation really kicked a lot of people who did not initially have that option. It opened up that option for them. So what if now roles that do not need you in house legitimately um, give you that remote or virtual option, you know, off the bat? I mean, I think this is something to really be considered. Again, this is already happening in some industries, but then there are other scenarios in which that's never been given to folks. They want you in-house. They want you in a building, you know, from an accountability perspective. And, um, and, um, and so to that point, you know, maybe this becomes more of a legit reality for a lot of people. I think this is something that we're learning during this process that might come into play that could be better for some people and offer flexibility, right? Um, another thing that we need to instill going forward, and I think this is a really, really big one, is the fact of checking in on family, friends, and neighbors. So I don't know what kind of groups you all have going on, but I have a lot of circles that, you know, folks are legitimately checking in on folks and making sure people have things. I was just outside walking up and down the street, getting some exercise in with the kids, and one of our neighbors, an older gentleman poked his head out the door and he was saying, hey, Mike, if y'all need anything, let us know. If you run out of toilet paper, you run out of supplies. Hey, we got you. I was like, cool. And same thing with you. I mean, just like little things like that, really becoming neighbors again. I think this process or this situation that we're going through really is going to open up the window for us to become neighbors again. Yes, we got social distancing and we're not physically embracing, but we're checking in. And I think that's something going forward once we're on the other side of this particular crisis, we need to keep going, checking in on your family, checking in on your friends, checking in on your neighbors. You hadn't talked to your buddy in a couple of years. Pick the phone up and call them. You know, this is no time is better than right now to do so. Um, the other thing that I think going forward that will potentially change or that we need to look at changing or making more of a legit reality, you know, post corona crisis is the new standards and protocols for cleaning of establishments. So you think about the gyms, the restaurants, the, you know, the places that you might go. I mean, even like uh, grocery stores and department stores. It's interesting now because of this crisis, when I'm there, I'm watching people clean more than I've ever seen them clean before. That's a little interesting, right? But that is a habit that I think probably needs to be established going forward that we need to adopt. And that's something that we can learn from this crisis is the importance of being clean, the importance of cleaning up and wiping down handles and doorknobs. And like, I don't think I've ever seen that done in a department store. But now if you were to go into a department store, they're wiping down handles they're wiping down countertops in a department store. I'm not talking about a food place, a department store. But then you think about food establishments, you think about restaurants, grocery stores, markets, they're cleaning things like I've never seen them clean before. But truthfully, that probably should have been done before. But this is something that going forward, we need to establish this protocol and make it a new reality. Again, in the midst of crisis, we can learn, right? We can grow and we can learn. But um, but we also have to you know, be mindful and take heed to all the the, the recommendations. But we also need to file in the back of our mind things that need to change going forward and how this crisis can be the impetus for that particular change. Um, another thing is, let's see, ah, personal hygiene, right? Washing hands. I'll tell you, for the last year, year and a half, I've been going to my local gym and telling management about how nasty it is in the doggone bathroom at times. 
Like I'm in there washing my hands and I watch someone jump off the toilet after dropping a deuce, walk straight out to the gym and grab dumbbells. Like it's nasty. Like, and I emphasize that to them all the time. Like that happens more often than not. I sat in the bathroom once for like 20 minutes and I watched guys go in and out of the stalls from the bathroom. Literally, it was only like two out of 10 that washed their hands. So yeah, that's it's freaking nasty. I know, I know, I know. The gym is like a cesspool. We know that. But the reality is after this whole coronavirus scenario that's going on right now, the, um, you know, the pandemic, Maybe this will help folks to realize the importance of personal hygiene, washing your hands, sneezing into your elbow, you know, wiping down equipment. I mean, things of that sort. So hopefully that's something going forward that we can adopt. And this is not just some isolated scenario that folks wash their hands now. But once the coronavirus is gone, it's back to going to the gym and watching people drop a deuce and then jump off the toilet and go grab dumbbells. You know, hopefully that changes as well. So again, these are things that we can adopt going forward in the, that we're learning or that we're kind of forced to do in the midst of this coronavirus situation that we're in the midst of. Um, the, the last thing, well, no, yeah, the last thing that I'm gonna, really going to um, kind of put here as far as like things that we can adopt and we can implement going forward is spending time with your family and your loved ones. You know, it's funny as parents, you know, we're all like, oh, Lord have mercy. You know, how many weeks are we going to be stuck in the house with, you know, toddlers or infants or elementary school kids or even teenagers if you got them. Right. But the reality is this is also forcing us to spend time with our family. This is forcing us to do that. And what I come to realize is because of life, because of all of our distractions and all the things that we have going on at times, we don't prioritize time with those that are most important to us. But then when that time is up, you know, when your kids are 18 and they're going off to college somewhere, we want to lose our stuff and start crying and being sad about them leaving. But I had 18 years of them growing up in which I didn't prioritize time with them. So this to me is a firm example or a firm reminder that we need to spend the necessary time with those that we have in our lives and make the most of it because um because time isn't time's not going to be here forever you know i mean i've mentioned this on my podcast about how in essence we have about a 20-year lease give or take a couple of years with our kids our kids are a 20-year long-term lease if you really think about it and so that 20 year long term lease comes up after about 20 years or so. So that means that we no longer have that time to spend with them. And so this type of situation that we're currently facing right now emphasizes the importance of spending time with your family. Yes, we're forced into it, but lean into that as well and make the most of it. And so. So I, I hope you all can, you know, just kind of groove with it. And I'd love to get your thoughts on it. You know, these are a few things that we're currently having to put in place due to the situation, due to the potential quarantine, due to the social distancing and all here in the United States, but also around the world. These are some of the things that we have to put in place now. But these are some of the things that I think we could learn from and possibly, you know, implement going forward. And our society may be better for that. So again, just kind of recapping, um, you know, doctors being able to practice across state lines, but I also threw in like educators or other professionals who are licensed state by state. If they can add value by crossing the state line and practicing, again, you're still within the same country. Maybe that's something that we need to consider. Um, online or virtual learning as an option to in-person learning for, you know, colleges. You know, I mean, honestly, yes, those are options that are currently available for a lot of individuals. But the reality is every degree program does not necessarily offer that in every institution or at, at every institution. Maybe that's something to be considered in which you have a legitimate option. Do I want to go in person or do I want to go online or virtual? Or maybe do I want to do a hybrid? You know, that might be a cost savings for some folks because, you know, obviously the cost of education is crazy. So something to think about um, remote working, virtual working for non in-person essential roles, definitely. That's something, again, some people work virtually already, but then there are other folks who could work virtually, but maybe their employer doesn't offer that. Maybe this is something to really consider in which if it's not required for you to physically be there, that needs to be a legitimate option going forward. 
um, checking in on family, loved ones, and neighbors. That should be a default. We don't always do it, but this crisis has now put that into the crosshairs. We need to make sure that we do that going forward. Um, establishing new protocols for cleanliness at, at establishments, g uh, gyms, bars, clubs, restaurants, department stores, anywhere you go, those pr the protocols for cleaning up and <laughs> being more clean definitely need to be put in place. Um, emphasizing the importance of personal hygiene, washing your hands, sneezing into your elbow, all of those things. These are, this is just a recap of what I mentioned. That stuff needs to continue after this crisis is over. Um, and then also spending time or prioritizing the time with your loved ones. That needs to continue. So these are a few things that need to continue. If you have anything else that you'd like to add to that, you know, drop it in the comments here and, um, you know, and get at me. You know, you can reach out to me, blackfathersnow at gmail.com. And I'd love to reply, engage and connect. And uh, as always, y'all be blessed, well and wise. And I'll holler at you. Peace.